Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Comeback Podcast. My name is Lauren Rose. I'm your host today. Ashley is under the weather. So we are interviewing Julie today, and she has a really incredible story, and we're really excited to share it with you. So Julie, why don't you go ahead and kind of tell us about your early years in the church, and then just kind of take us on your journey with you. Great. So I grew up in the church uh, in Utah, and I loved going to church. I loved uh, everything they taught, and I just I love the songs. I love primary. I loved everything about it. And it just really spoke to my heart. And so I never really questioned myself or questioned what I believed. It was just, it always just felt true. And so then in about 2016, I was 39, I was turning 40 and I wasn't sleeping well. I just really felt like there was something I was supposed to do. I had four kids at home and I was the trying to be the best mom I could, but I just really felt like there was something else for me. And so I went into therapy just for me, just to get some peace and get some answers. And so the first thing that he said, because I gave him a laundry list of all the things that was going wrong in my life. And he said, well, what, what do you dream about? And I said, what does that have to do with anything? And he said, what do you dream about? And I was like, I, I don't know. I don't even know what I like. I don't even know who I am. And so I kind of just started exploring, um, what I, what did I like? I went to a restaurant and by myself, which I would never do before, or I, and and I did, I started beginning to dream. And some of these dreams were really powerful. And one of them was about going to school. One of them was about, uh, teaching, teaching music, because that's one of my passions, but I wasn't doing any of those things at the time. And so I went back to school, which was a huge step for me because I was always taught that I want to be a stay at home mom. And that was, that was it. Right. And so I didn't think that I had permission to go outside of this realm. And so I started questioning everything. I started questioning my marriage, I started questioning, um, you know, being a mom, my identity. And, and then I started questioning the church and I started questioning, well, what, what do I believe and what don't I? And there was so many things that came up that really bothered me. Like if someone talks about gratitude and then, then you're supposed to feel grateful because they told you that you're, that that's what is true or Um, like a service, is it service if you really are told to do it or is it from your heart? Um, so there was just a lot of, I guess, and I feel like the church has changed a lot since, since my leaving and coming back in, in that I feel like there was a lot of rules put in place that we felt like we had to do. I felt like I had to do them. Um, and so my covenants was something that I felt like, um, it was a have to thing. Um, you have to go to the temple, you have to do these things. And it was more of an obligation rather than something that I wanted, or I felt like was, was bringing me closer to where I wanted to be. And so I was like, you know what? I'm going to make my own covenants. I'm going to, I'm going to follow my own heart and I'm, I'm going to put my covenants behind. And so, um, the thing is not a lot of people knew that I had left. Uh, my husband knew and, um, my oldest daughter knew my other kids didn't, um, so is, when you say you left, you mean you just mentally checked out, but you were still going to church or how did they? Um, yeah. So I was um, leading choir. 
So, cause that was one of the reasons I was leading choir was because I was going to be a choir teacher and in school I was, that's why I was studying. And so I was like, well, I'll just stick with this job that I have in, in, at the church and I'll, I'll do that. But as far as like staying after sacrament and going to the rest of the meetings, I would usually go home or I would, um, you know, underwear was like not like a new set of underwear and just like just leaving those specific things behind um i didn't um i just felt like you know what that's that's not a part of me anymore that's that's my past life i'll i'll do these things as service but it's really to help me to grow as a person in what i want to do and um so you know People would ask, well, well, where's Julie at church to my husband? And he's like, well, church does this, isn't her thing. Like she just goes for the kids and, but it's not really something that she's into right now. And he was super patient. Like he, he knew where I was. He wasn't upset. He wasn't saying, oh, come on, or trying to get me to do anything which I thought was huge because it helped me to go on my own path and to not feel any pressure that there was any huge expectation. I feel like it's a really easy trap that, oh no, you're not such and such. And then you're, and then there's, there can be this battle. And that just wasn't the case. He was, you just felt peace about it that I just needed to do this. And so awesome. it, it really was. So, um, and that was probably for a couple of years. Um, and I want to say there was things that came up, um, specifically with my children that were really hard. Um, and so stepping away from the church, stepping away from those blessings, I just, Um, I took things really personal and it was really hard to go through. Um, but I didn't think that I needed those covenants. I didn't think that it was necessary. Um, but I didn't have that extra help either to get me through those, those hard things. So I was taking on, um, thinking things were my fault or that I could have been a better mom or all these negative, uh, emotions. And, um, it probably wasn't necessary for me to go in that place, but that's kind of, I, I kind of went in the dark (laughs) a little bit because I didn't have that extra help. So did you believe in God still? Yeah, but I didn't, I didn't pray. Um, But I also, I really felt like it was important for me that I didn't, I didn't talk about it. I didn't, I didn't want to be responsible for someone else's faith failing because of me. And so even with my children, I wouldn't talk about um, what I did or didn't believe. I wouldn't criticize the church ever because I didn't want to be responsible for them falling away or making making other choices that i don't know that i what, i just what did they be, think was going on did they did they understand that you had left the church but it just it just wasn't talked about period like is that kind of how it was in the house well most three of them didn't know so it was just my oldest so they were just oblivious and they thought that you were still just going and yeah everything was fine. yeah and that every everyone was just going um and my oldest daughter, she stopped going to church and we had, we had talked more, her and I, a little bit more about it. And there, she came up with her own reasons why she didn't want to go. Um, and I felt like she was old enough that that was going to be okay. Um, but it's a struggle because now three of them have left and there's only the youngest that we kind of, she's nine. I don't feel like she's old enough to <laughs> make that decision. So um, anyway, but yeah, it's a struggle even for her to go to church. She'll go to 
our adult meetings together with us, but she won't go to primary. So it's it's been very interesting to see how it's affected our youngest that our other kids don't go to church. So, and some of that could be because I wasn't going that I, I could have influenced them in that time period that might've been critical, but that is a space that I just can't blame myself for because it's something I needed to do. So, yeah. So, um, so coming back, um, I was, so I was in a life coaching group and I was studying to be a life coach and I decided to get some personal life coaching for myself, um, just to really get good at that. Um, and so January, 2020, I started with a life coach and he was a member and, but it wasn't something that he would push on me. It was just more of like, so tell me your thoughts on this. And then he would share some things like, you know, if there was ever a church out there that had the power, that had the authority, that had the priesthood, like this one does, like the, and the revelation, if there was ever a church like that anywhere else in the world, he's like, I'd be a part of it for sure. And um, and there would be other times where he would say, you know, you could receive more if you were, if you had your covenants, you could receive more. And so these ideas kind of stuck with me. And I was like, you know, I think I want to explore this again. I want to look at it and maybe there's something here that could help me. And so I decided it's the beginning of March, 2020. And I decided, you know, I'd really like a blessing to kind of get some, some direction. And I didn't want it from my bishop. I didn't want it from my parents. I didn't want it from my husband. I didn't want it from anyone that I felt like had some sort of agenda, some sort of like, um, tie to, to me being a part of the church. And so I received a blessing from a friend and it was a beautiful blessing. Um, and it was so, so deep and personal. Um, but one of the things it said was that, um, so the blessing said, I bless you that you will walk in your own path and by your own choice, return to full activity in the Lord's church without obligation, without compulsion, but because of my own choice, because of me deciding that it would be right for me to do that. And um, he also blessed me that the Lord would be patient with me and love me regardless. And those things really just stuck with me. And there were so many other things in the blessing that I would receive if I returned. And it wasn't even because I had received blessings in the past where they would say, if you don't return, that your daughter will be affected or um, like huge guilt, right? And that's not what this blessing had in it. And so I was like, wow. I really need to look at this. And I really wanted to be, to receive those blessings for myself. And so I reached out to a friend um, and this was someone I had, I had met online. He was a composer. I was a composer. And so we had gotten together after a concert and I shared part of my story. He wasn't a member at the time, but he was um he had been a part of the producing music for the church and he what he had been a member but wasn't currently and he just said you know i've decided he this is what he said i've decided that i'm a really spiritual person and so i go to church i don't go to the lds church but i i do go to church 
And I was like, you know, that's how I feel too. I feel like I'm really drawn to these spiritual things and I need them in my life. And it's kind of felt empty and um, like I'm just going out of my own way, which is fine, but I could, I could get more. And so I, that experience of, of meeting him and, and talking with him, and it, it wasn't even the same church, you know, it, but it was like, he loves spiritual things and so did I. And I knew that. And so I went to the bishop and I said, I need a temple recommend. And he's like, well, just go to the temple. And I'm like, well, it's a little more complicated than that. He's like, okay. So I tell him what, what I need because, you know, no garments, no nothing. So I have to get all those things and I need a temple recommend to be able to do that. So anyway, so as I'm talking to him, he's like, so what brought you, what brought you around? I was like, no, I wasn't willing to go into it at all. He started to cry. And I was like, I just want to answer these questions and go. I didn't, I didn't want to explain anything. I didn't want to go into it. And my heart was, my heart was, was like, all I want is the blessings. I don't even like, just, just let me answer the questions and I'll go. Like it was very, it, it was, and it was almost like I had to put all of my doubts, all of my fears, all of my anxiety and frustrations and everything. I had to put them on a sacrificial table and said, these stay here and I want the blessings more. And so that's what I did. And so I met with the bishop, I met with the stake president and, um, so then he, um, let's see, this was on a Sunday and then, um, I got garments on Wednesday and then, and this was during spring break of my schooling. So I had time to do all these things. Um, and then on Thursday I went to the temple and then it was like, a Wednesday or Thursday, the next week temples were completely shut down. Wow. And it was so significant to me that the, the amount of steps that had to be in place for me and my heart to be ready to do that. And it was, it was a huge step. And it was honestly something that I never thought I would do. Like I never thought I would go back when I left, I was like, I'm done. I'm done. Like, I, I just didn't think that that was a possibility to even go back. So as temples were closed, I was like, oh my gosh, like this, w it was like a miracle to me that it would, that I was able to, you know, get this blessing, meet with this person that, that helped me and then get my recommend, get, get everything that needed to be in place, right? And then to be able to go to the temple and then shut down. And it, and so for a year for like, or longer, like it was crazy. I can't help but think of like the timing. Yeah. And what could have happened to your testimony if you didn't get that chance to go to the temple or to start going back to church before COVID happened? Right. Because COVID, grace. COVID was so hard for everyone. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but to have those extra blessings during COVID when it was awful, when, when things are dark and it's hard to have those extra covenants and blessings was really, really important to me. And it was no accident that it happened in the way that it did. So I, I feel really grateful that those things happened. And then while, while we're all waiting, I took the time to start reading the Book of Mormon again and to study my covenants and what they really meant and that it's a relationship, that it's a closeness that we can have that you can't have any other way. And um, then when we were able to go back. Um, I started going with my dad and 
that was really special too, because we would find cancellations. And so we would take these opportunities of looking online and finding a baptism that wasn't there before. And it was just a miracle that we could get that baptism in there because baptisms were just booked solid, right? For months, you couldn't even get one. And so that was really significant too, that these little miracles would happen, that we could have these opportunities and things that we never went to the temple together before. Like we never went ever, like it wasn't a thing. And now I got to go with my dad and have these amazing experiences with ceilings, with, with, um, you know, and even starting temple or family history work. I haven't ever done that before. And this was so that that's been a new world for me. Um, and it's just been incredible that I've been able to have these experiences with my dad that, um, you know, he's getting older and it's not gonna be around forever. And it, these just been really sweet experiences to be baptized by my dad. Um, and to, you know, have these ceilings and endowments and just, and, and to do family names versus just any name. Um, it's just been really rich and deep for me to be able to receive those things. So um, I watched Schindler's List probably a year ago, and it really brought into perspective what covenants are to me because these people, these, these ladies were in Auschwitz and they're like, we're not supposed to be here. We're supposed to be in Brenslitz. Why are we here? And they kept saying, we're Schindler's Jews. Like we, we don't belong here. We're Schindler's Jews. And that, um, when they started saying that, that just played in my mind and it just really brought home. It's like, those are what covenants are. We say whose we are when we covenant that. And it's, it's that he saves us from, from death, from, um, spiritual death. And, um, but not only that, it's like a protection and a, a safety and, um, you know, holding close. It's, it's a closeness that we can experience when we hold close to those covenants. So it's been really powerful to me to realize deeper what covenants mean, that it's not a have to thing, that it's something we get to do, that we can receive more because we're willing to receive him. That's beautiful. So, Thank you for sharing that. That's beautiful. Thanks. So... Yeah, so it's been a beautiful journey, and I feel like my whole world has been opened up to new possibilities. Um, I've, you know, just discovered such beauty even in the world and just seeing so many more miracles happen because of this one experience to see God's hand in my life in in small and big ways, even just watching the sunrise is um, really special because... It's just feeling that sunlight on your face and to feel that warmth and that love and to, um, you know, really feel like Christ is there in that moment of, of the sun peeking out from, from the clouds and from the, you know, we have mountains and so it's peeking over the mountain and shining and it's like, I see you and, and you see me. And I, it's love, just, I love that. That remind when I was reading like your the summary of your story, how you were writing about that and the depth that that was added to your life by having Christ in your life. Like I experienced the same thing in my come when I was coming back, and I I guess you know I, I didn't realize that I was shallow, but I I I guess I was shallow or I'm more shallow than than I am now, but understanding the gospel and having Christ in your life, it does, it brings so much more depth in every little thing. Like you said, even just a sunrise, there's so much beauty and the gratitude, it just comes so naturally. 
because yeah. when you see the beauty, you appreciate the beauty, and then you're just grateful for it because you're in the middle of it. And I remember experiencing that, and it was so, it was like seeing the world with new eyes. So that's really cool. I'm glad you shared that with us. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's been, it's been really neat, even, and even just small things of, you know, we had state conference and the um, president talked about how even if people leave, he knows where they are. And studying the Old Testament has really opened my eyes to, even though they're scattered, he knows exactly where they are. And he is there in every moment of their life as well. Even if they don't recognize it, he's he's a part of it. So, and that that's one thing that I've really um, realized in my journey is that just because you leave doesn't mean that you can't come back. And even if people do leave, you can have hope. You don't know what the future is going to hold. You don't know what, what it looks like. I don't know what it looks like for my kids. Um, and we always have hope that something good will come out of it, that something, some miracle will happen that we don't, we can't see and to not give up, um, that there's no pressure, (laughs) but it's something that we hope for and hope is a powerful thing. It really is powerful. Um, so yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, to give you a little hope, I I was just thinking while you were talking that I my, with my story, I am the child of a wayward parent and I it led to me being inactive in the church and kind of just leaving religion altogether. And although I made a lot of mistakes that, you know, I I didn't have to, like I could have avoided all these things if I would have stayed in the church, but like I came back and I came back way stronger because so if that, I don't know if that brings you any hope, but there is always hope. Yeah. There is always hope. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, one other thing I want to say. Mm -hmm. I had a lot of guilt leaving the church. Well, coming back because I felt like I um, rejected Jesus and his gift. And I feel like, um, I had to get over my guilt of even leaving in the first place. And so that is something that might come up for people as they're coming back, that they might feel bad that they hurt him in some way or, um, and that it's that was a healing process too is to heal from um just feeling guilty about leaving that it's that's okay too that it was something i needed to do and that it's okay that it had to happen that way and that he still loves us you know that he still loves me and um wants he just wants me back you know my children, I don't care if they've left. I want them back. And it's it's okay whatever their journey is, but it doesn't matter to me. It just want what's best for them. So anyway, just want to share that. Yeah. Yeah. That's beautiful. Do you want to share a little bit with us about, you know, what's going on in your life today? And yeah. So um through all my journey. <laughs> I started doing a lot of different things where I was never on Facebook. I was never on Instagram and there was just so many things I overcame fears about. So I started a blog and, um, my website is www.jburningham.com. And so that's where my blog is. And I started writing music and I recorded an album in 2019 that was amazing um it's an amazing experience and then i just recorded a single that's coming out in december 
beginning of December. I think it's December 7th. So I'm really excited about that. It's an amazing song. It's about walk in the sunlight. That's the title. And it's just um, having hope, having hope for the future. And so I'm super excited about that. So I started a YouTube channel. I, I started doing Facebook lives and I started doing Instagram, like so many, so many things. My world had just opened up. And wow. so um, it's been really neat to just even just overcome fear and just the, have a reframe of how I see, how I see life. So right now I'm a music teacher. I teach K to third grade couple times a week and I love them. I get hugs every day that I go there. They're so fun. It's my favorite thing. And then I get to be a life coach the rest of the time. I love doing that. It's been really rewarding to help people see a different, different way, different life, a different frame of mind, right? To overcome their fears as well. So what an incredible transformation, you know, to go from just, you know, being a a member that's just like checking off a list to like being a member that's truly engaged and your entire life just transforms, even though you've been, it's the same church. It's just your engagement has changed your, your level. Right. Well, and even I could say even, um, my depth of my relationships with my family and my, my husband has just been so much deeper. It's been incredible. Um, and even my kids, um, just seeing them transform because I was in school, they had to step up a lot and their responsibility level just raised because I wasn't there to do laundry. I wasn't there to make sure they got off to school. They, they stepped up a lot. So I never did dishes for, I don't know, four years or whatever. They always did them. And so there was a lot that went into even raising my family and, and their awareness and, and their contribution and, and responsibility level was, it was awesome. It was awesome to see all, all of the pieces work together. And that was pretty miraculous as well to, to have that support, to be able to go back to school. It was a big deal because four yeah. kids and all that. So anyway, yeah. You, you so, mentioned the book when you, when yeah. you actually, what could you tell us a little about that book? Yeah. So it's called Covenant Hearts and it's by Bruce C. Hafen. And it, I, I think I already had this book. Um, but it just drew me in when I was struggling. Um, because in the blessing, it talked about understanding my covenants and, and then there was this book. And so it really just helped me to understand my covenants more. And then I could talk to my husband about it. And it was just a really neat, neat experience to have this book right there and to read it during COVID. And it was, it was produced in 2005. Um, but it was just, I have like all these different pages marked and, and, so it's just been a really neat treasure to have this, um, to understand covenants better. It's, it's just an amazing book. So highly recommend it. Well, you, you know, we, so we do a book club and, um, this month we are reading faith is not blind by Bruce C. Haven. So we'll have to add. Oh, that to yeah. 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 Bruce C. Haven's incredible. And his work, um, is pretty amazing because he, he worked, so much with um statistics and what happens with a marriage versus non-marriage and all of the laws that are happening and so he he really has studied a lot on just what marriage looks like for the community that it's not just it's just not just two people it's it's a community event and it's wow. that the community supports them and they support the community and it's it's a really neat relationship that he talks about and so that's the thing on the cover i don't know if you can see that but yeah it's um a marriage and the whole village is coming out to to welcome them to to support them and so that's why you know i feel like um divorce can be a death can be a like it's it's hard on everybody yeah. to to see that happen 
Um, people don't want to say that, I guess, but it's, it's hard. It, it's hard on everybody. It's not just the couple. It's, it's everyone feels it. So anyway, so I love, I love Brucey Hafen and just his work to support families. So he's awesome. I love that. I'm so glad you shared that with us. I'm excited yeah, to read it. Yeah. Thank you. Cool. All right. Well, I really, really enjoyed talking to you tonight. It's been great to get to know you and I'm so glad that you've opened up to us and we're just so blessed to be blessed by your beautiful testimony. So thank you so much. Yeah. Thanks for having me. I just, I'm really grateful you have this podcast to help people understand that they're not alone and that it's okay to come back. Thank you so much for being a supporter of the Comeback Podcast and listening to our episodes. It would mean so much to us if you would like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. It helps other people be able to find us and we want to share this message to everyone.